Welcome to this tutorial. I'm gonna show you how I got this retro video game look with Adobe Premiere Pro. I'm predicting this could be the next viral trend, so stay tuned. First of all, I shoot some footage doing the most mechanical and weird moves as possible. Trust the process. Now it's time to edit. Once I chose the best shot, I duplicated and created an SD sequence for each of the videos. One will be the main shot, and the other the video game effect. In each of the nested sequences, I added a PNG I designed earlier with some posters. This will be the background. As you can see, the background of the video game sequence already has this retro look. I did this previously to make sure the poster was already bold. Now it's time to apply this effect to the world video game sequence, and we'll start with the movement. To do this, I use the posterized same effect and sped up the video. You can try different rates until you get the movement you like the most. You can also cut out the parts you don't like, it doesn't need to be perfect. It's time for the look. To get it, I first added the posterized effect and then the mosaic effect and adjusted both until I got the result I wanted. Yes, it's as easy as it sounds. Now that we are done with the video game effect sequence, let's move on to the transformation. So, to get this transition between the realistic look and the retro look, I placed both sequences so that they match, and I created an opacity mask and made it progressively span until it filled the entire image. Finally, I added some props like the heart and the blanking title. You can be as creative as you want in this part. That's it, but you may be wondering how I did this other scene. So, I'm gonna tell you. Doing this is as easy as the previous shot. The only difference is that in this case I use a green screen to add the entire background in post-production. To work with green screens, I highly recommend using the HSL secondary section of Lumetric Color, especially if it's not properly lit and has some shadows, as in my case. This way, when we apply the ultra key effect, it will be much easier to make the correction. Once this was done, I used an opacity mask to select the character and change its position so that it appeared from the left side of the screen. Then I added the posterized time effect, mosaic, color corrected, and all the stuff you already know how to do. Then it was time to add the background. I chose an Adobe stock image and I used the same effects to get the final look. Again, I added some PNGs for the home screen and made them appear slowly, changing the blend mode to screen in the case of the blinking letters and to dissolve in the case of the video game title. I also added a screen texture. The last step was to add the sequence over the video in which I hold the game controller. I changed the blend mode to screen and used the basic 3D and bitter glow effects to integrate it. And that's all! Now you can level up and have fun creating with Premiere Pro.